Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is um, Frank Luder, and I'm here with my friend and colleague Aaron Hamza, and we welcome you to this uh, further uh, installment of the Crisis and Critique podcast, Philosophy and Its Other Scene. Today, we continue our conversation um, with um, um, Jacques Rancière, and you find a longer introduction to the biography and to the publications and to the overall oeuvre to Jacques Rancière in the first episode of this trialogue. Um, I will briefly um, suggest that if you like the work that we're doing here and uh, the philosophical conversations that we're trying to um, 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 uh, generate, subscribe to our channel. Um, I also want to briefly announce that the next issue of the journal Crisis and Critique devoted to the issue Classes Today will come out next month. But without any further ado, I will um, now um, continue or Im immediately resume um, uh, and recommence our conversation um, in media's race, so to speak, um, rather than, than, than saying anything else. Um, and um, we move now um, again into the territory um, of uh, the connection between, let's say, theory and philosophy and politics. So in the um, in 2009, the conference proceedings of a major conference, namely the idea of communism held in London were published, um, wherein a text, uh, when Jacques Rancière published a text, namely uh, that is entitled Communists Without Communism, question mark. And our, our first question is, um, um, do you think, Jacques, that this is something we have to conceive of today, a collective form of emancipatory practice without, let's say, unifying form, but also maybe without uh, a necessarily per se unifying vision? How to be a communist? This is what we, what we uh, wondered without an idea of what one is fighting for, or more specifically, can one act positively to bring about emancipation without having an idea of what emancipation actually is? Okay, of course, the whole problem is about the idea of what, uh, what one is fighting for, you know. Well, okay. I so I uh, I wrote this text, uh, communist uh, without com without communism, and of course it, it it may seem that speaking of being a communist without communism may may may, may mean uh, something like uh, walking without any idea of where where you are heading for, uh, and of course uh, you can you, you can he here evoke. Uh, for instance, Badiou criticism of what he calls movementism, movement, movementism, meaning collective action without an idea, an idea, you know, giving its orientation, you know, to that action. Well, now, well, as I said, you know, well, okay, you need an idea, but the point is, what, what, what do you mean? What you mean, you know, with with the, the word idea? What what idea means, you know? And and how and also the second point, of course, is how this, how an idea can orient us. Okay, so so I think uh, I think uh, you you can uh, you you can uh, put two 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 things under the idea of idea. <laughs> First, uh, the idea the idea of a certain state of things, you know, that must be reached, you know, and of course, uh, also the idea of the ways uh, for reaching it. And but you you can also you can also think of uh, the idea of of fight or the idea of walk, you know, as as in fact, you know, the idea that gives its sense, its sense to our fighting or our walking. So, well, in the first case, in the first case, you know, the idea of communism uh, must include two things. It must include the idea of the idea of communism as a form of society, a form of economy. You know, so uh, the idea of communism must uh, must in include. Uh, a perception of what of, of what the future society will be, you know, how, how labor will be organized, how, how collective decision will be made, and how people will live, etc. Yeah. Okay, and also it it must include the idea of, of the ways for, for for reaching communism, meaning meaning the classical you know problems about the combination of legal and illegal action, pacific and violent actions, et cetera, it's class alliances, et cetera, et cetera. 
Well, I think the, the, for me, the, the, the point is that in the conference on communism that you mentioned, you know, nobody, and I think that nobody, no, nobody, you know, you know, presented such an idea of communism, you know, no, nobody told, you know, what the future society will be and how we, how we can reach it. So, for instance, if you, if you if you take, you know, perhaps the most explicit, most explicit, you know, talk about the idea of communism in that conference, uh, that was a bad use, a bad use talk, you know, and bad you made it very, very clear, you know, that communist, communist cannot be an adjective. This means, you know, you cannot you, you cannot use communists to qualify to qualify your society, to qualify your form of action, to qualify your party. No, communism is just an idea, an, an idea, an idea meaning for him, you know, in, in fact, a form a form of a form of uh, uh, a form of connection, meaning communism is the the idea the idea that makes the con the connection between a political process of subject of, of subjectivation and the symbolic dimension of history. Right, you know. So in this case, you know, in, in this case, of course, you have an idea of communism, but this is not this is not uh, this is not a determination of the future society of the way uh, the, for reaching for, for reaching it. You know, it is the affirmation of a kind of infinite process of subtraction from for, 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 from the from the state. You know, so and and well, uh, a very 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 striking uh, passage. You know, in, in this uh, talk by by Alain Badiou, you know, uh, you know about the. Way communism is already present you know when you have uh, four students and a worker you know gather uh, you know gather gathering to discuss you know in a faraway suburb you know which of course is a reminiscence of uh, Matthew's gospel you know the, the Christ telling you know when you are two or three you know uh, you, I am I am with you I am among I am among you so um, uh, so uh, for me it amounts to saying you know uh, communism is an idea of the future to the extent that it is already at work, you know, that it is anticipated here and now, you know, which, which in fact is very close to my own idea of emancipation, meaning that emancipation is not an end, but a starting point, you know, and that that cannot that, that cannot be, you know, really a distinction between the ends of means, you know. And I think so. I think that well, in both cases, you know, in both cases, uh, the idea wor uh, works uh, mo most, mo mostly as uh, as a maxim, as a maxim to orient to orient, of course, the way we walk, you know, and how and how we walk, but not the point, you know, towards uh, which you, you we walk. So uh, if we if. So if we kind of formulate, you know, the maxims, I, I, I would say, well, my, my maxim is act, act as member of, as, uh, act as a member of a community of equal beings, you know, bad use of a bad use, the maxim is act as a member of a community of eternal beings, you know, and you, you, we, we can, we can also you know, evoke, you know, Tony's, uh, Tony Negri's, you know, formulas, you know, about the irrepressible lightness and joy uh, of being a communist, you know. I think in all those, uh, in all, all, all of those formulas and all those maxims, you know, of course, we, we, we have the same reminiscence of, I would say, uh, Kant's, uh, Kant's kingdom of ends, you know. <laughs> We we must we must act as a member of a community of of, of a kingdom of ends mean, meaning precisely of uh, you know of of a place where there is no more a distinction between ends and means. So <laughs> this would be my 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 answer about do we need an idea? Yes, we need an idea. The point is what an idea is. Thank you very much. Uh, we would like to move. To a, a different topic, uh, a, a little bit, uh, if that's okay with you. You have written uh, several books uh, that address uh, film and the movies, including a book on uh, uh, Bellatar, the time after, uh, the future of the image, the intervals of cinema, and just uh, recently modern times temporality in art and uh, and politics. Uh, what is it that the films can do, as your as your titles uh, suggest? It must have to, uh, something to do with your with the organization uh, of time that other forms of uh, art uh, cannot do, right? 
Okay, okay. I uh, I would say that uh, of course uh, to, to set up the question, you know, uh, well, there are two, two main points. You know, uh, the, the first point, of course, is uh, cinema. Uh, cinema is uh, is the art of modern times. Uh, par excellence, you know, because it is a mechanical art, you know, a bone of technical progress, you know, so a kind of the, the art that, 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 that seems to be, you know, a, well, a child, a child of its time, you know, the first point, of course. And the second point is the very, nat very nature of film, you know, uh, meaning for that for me, you know, uh, well, uh, Film, film is uh, film is first of all the construction of a specific time. You know, m much more than being simply you know a, a narration with images. You know, so so I think it's about time. It's about time. You know, <laughs> more than uh, than about images. images. Filmic narration is not a, st a story with images. It's a specific, it, it, it's a, it, it's a narration whose very stuff is time, because well, the, the the elements, the elements of the narration are are you know units of time, and all and the narration itself is a specific condensation of time of time you know, and and of course what is what is very important in the case of of film you know is that well the time of the unfolding of the film is is the same as the as the time of the of the spectator of the spectator you know who is who, who is you know looking at the film so so which of course is not the same in, in the novel the, the novel constructs of course a time but it's not the time it's not the time of the reader. Okay, so so because it is a first a child of child of its time, and a second because it is a narration made made you know of fragments of time. Well, it seems that uh, film is more perhaps than any than any other art able uh, to tell us uh, so, so something or to grasp something of our experience of time. Our experience of time, meaning two things at once, you know, uh, first time as the stuff, our lived experience, but, but also time as a specific historical, specific historical moment. And in a way, you know, uh, film uh, appears to be a, able, well, precisely, you know, uh, to, to grasp this interla interlacing of two, of two times, of historical time and lived time, you know. Okay, and so, uh, so I, 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 I I looked at some some forms of this interlacing of of time, you know, and of course, as a, as a, for instance, there is a, uh, there is a very simple <laughs> simple way of of uh, interlacing uh, them, which is a way used by 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 Vertov, you know, and uh, of course, this is why I I. I uh, I spoke. I, I spoke about that of about of films, you know, so several several times, you know, because of course uh, this is a kind of immediate overlap overlapping of times, so overlapping of time. The idea that communism as communism as as a new time, as a, and uh, at the same way is uh, it is uh, it is you know the form of organization in, in in which you know everybody everybody works everybody acts you know uh, to construct the, the same time. So and and the and the and the time of the film is supposed to be just the connection of all these those activities you know that are that, that are in fact nothing more you know that uh, I would say uh, uh, forms of movement forms. Of movement, way way of participating, uh, participating in the in, in in the same time. So there is this kind of practice of cinema uh, that that wants really to well uh, to, to grasp the collective practice of communism well as a synchrony. So there is there is this overlapping, you know, uh, that is that is dedicated, you know, to this construction of communism as synchronism. And of course, what well, this is well, this was this was possible. But for Vertov and Vertov's times, and it will be difficult for us now now to to conceive of this way of overlapping the two times, because precisely, well, uh, we live after we live after you know the the communist moment uh, after the end of communism, which means also after uh, after the end of a state of face in a, in a well in an history leading uh, leading to a future of. 
liberty and equality and so on. So that uh, so the point is is now that in, in fact uh, instead of an uh, overlapping of time, we will live in a kind of, of of splitting of splitting of times. I mean that uh, well, uh, lived time uh, seems uh, seems no 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 more no, no more precise, precisely you know uh, con con concordant with historical time. But well, live lived time is something that appears to be kind of a resistance to action kind of impossibility of action you know and, and the problem i think of and the problem of the uh, of the filmmakers you know that i studied like Bellata or pedro, pedro costa you know is well how, uh, what, what it means uh, what, what it means uh, which, which uh, what, uh, or what what kind of organization of time you know is is is, ne is needed you know to to account uh, to account for for this uh, this kind of split uh, splitting uh, splitting of time splitting between lived time uh, and historical time but also how, how is it is it possible you know to recreate uh, to recreate some kind of orientation which of course is completely different uh, completely different you know and of course also, well, uh, so are you uh, I, I gave this title, you know, to my book on Bellatar, the, the time after. Well, of course, Be Bellatar is a Hungarian filmmaker coming, uh, coming uh, well, at the end of communism and after the end of of of, commun of communism. And what is uh, what extraordinary is the way in which he, in a way, as an artist, as an artist, uh, it, it it transforms, you know, the time after. In a time before, you know, and, and I mean, it, it, if, if you think of a film like Satan Tango, you know, Satan Tango is well is about you know so the collapse of the collapse of a collective farm, you know, but. At the moment when, at the moment when the collective uh, farm has collapsed, uh, there, there come, then comes a, a swindler, a swindler, you know, and, and the swindler, you know, who, who, who tells uh, the, the peasants, you know, that it is possible to create to create a new commune, you know, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you know, and, and well, which which means, you know, uh, there, there is this form of mobilization, you know, uh, that is in you in, in a way constructed as a way. Of transforming the time after, and so uh, so uh, uh, what what, uh, what I try to show, you know, in, uh, about Berata's film as well, how, how he really he delves into the experience of time. And experience of time, first of all, is experience of expectation, you know. But expectation means two different things, you know. You expect uh, you expect uh, the repetition of the same, you know, or you expect something new, you know. And what is what is important, you know, precisely in, in, in the case of Bellatar's film is, well, this treatment of ex expectation, expectation, you know. Well, it is a time, it, it is a repetitive time, a, a circling a circling time, you know, uh, and at a, cert, at a certain moment, you know, there, there, is, a, there is a kind of jump into the, un, into the unknown or, or a straight line, you know, that goes, you know, astray from the, 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 this circling line, you know. Okay, and and I think it is possible. It, it is possible, you know, to show this uh, if you really uh, work with the materiality, of, the materiality of time, you know. And well, uh, I'm, uh, and, 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 uh, I also worked a lot on Pedro Costa's film, you know, because well, of course it's it, it's it's different. It's different. It's not. It, it's not. Uh, after uh, after communism, uh, in a way, it's, it's, rather, it's rather after colonialism, <laughs> in, in a way. And well, what what is a problem for for from, for Berata, You know, well, he is is in in front of so migrant migrant workers. You know what? Well, what what have, what have gone to, to Portugal? You know, well, of course, out of the the. the Capitalist and, and and colonialist lo, lo, logic, so, but those, those individuals now, well, are precisely are mere individuals. You know, they are no they are no more members of, of any collective group. They, they, they are not, you know, they, they are not, you know, participants in a kind of global historical process. So mere, mere mere individuals, you know. And what it tries what it tries to do is well to to create a, to create a time a time for 
for, 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 for them, you know. In a way, they are only in the immediate time, the time of what Aristotle calls the, the chronicle, you know, things, uh, things that, uh, that go, you know, one after the other and, and, nothing, and nothing more. And, 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 and what, he, what, what he does, you know, is to create a specific time, you know, by, uh, uh, by, by, making, uh, by making those individuals, you know, without qualities, individuals without orientation, you know, making them actors, act actors playing or replaying, you know, uh, scenes that are uh, forms of condensation of, our, of their own life, of their own, of their own experience, you know. And so, uh, and so, well, the, the time of the, the chronicles, the, 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 the time, you know, of where nothing happened, nothing ever happens, you know, it's, turn, it's, turned, it's turned into another time, a time, a, a time of theatrical performance, you know, so it's a time, a time of, of performance, you know? and what all, I think also is, is uh, I try to show uh, about, uh, so uh, about uh, this performance is is how you know uh, Pedro Costa, Pedro Costa, you know, makes. Um, uh, makes a connection between the time of performance and and other time, kind of mystical time, you know. And uh, uh, there are people who are living between life, between life and death, you know. And he makes he makes he makes them actors in a kind of theatrical, you know, descent to, to the earth. So, so uh, this is uh, well, for me. Uh, so Bellata and Pedro Costa, well, uh, I was interest, interested uh, well, in, in, in their work uh, well, for many reasons, uh, but you know, you, you know, uh, particularly uh, for, for their way of making this kind of inner transformation of time. You know? So, so the, the time which is supposed to, to, to be the, well, the time of disillusionment, you know, the time, the, the time of unbelief, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and despair. They turned it into kind of. Uh, of new time, a, a time of, expect, of expectation and, and action. Um, thank you so much for this. I, I think the next question follows <clears throat> follows quite quite well and connects well with the um, <clears throat> because it has something to do with the organization or economy of expectation as well. In in recent years, there have been many debates and conversations about the shift from, let's say, the predominance of film to the predominance of the format of the series. So watching the film in the cinema is clearly very different from watching the series at home. Um, and this has even uh, changed uh, the status of the production of the film, including the fact, for example, uh, that this builds the groundwork of a company like Netflix to then become influential, even in terms of film production and um, that even plays a role at the Oscars and stuff like that. Do you think that this apparent shift um, um, towards seriality could do something to the significance of film or has an impact on the significance of film as an art form? Or has this already happened, maybe? What do you think about contemporary the contemporary predominance of the series and its maybe aesthetic and also political implications? Well, I think that uh, there are two problems, you know, that must not be confused, you know. Uh, first, the difference between two forms of fiction, and second, the difference between two modes of spectatorship, you know, which, of course, uh, uh, means, uh, may mean, uh, you know, Ultimately, the difference between two kinds of society, two two stage, two, two stages of capitalism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, okay. But well, so so let, let's just try, you know, to make uh, to make some distinctions. You know, well, we look we look at a series at series uh, so before uh, be, uh, before a TV screen, you know. Well, so uh, some people, you know, so many people m make, uh, you know, uh, have this idea that series is uh, well, a form of fiction with witnessing a kind of reinforcement of individualism, or and, and at the same time an increased passivity of the spec of the spectators. So, so of course, there is a co connection between the, you know, the displacement from the film to the to, to the. The series, you know, makes a connection with uh, well, the rise of mass individualism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Well, I think that, that this is clearly not the case, you know. But of course, well, we look series at 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 home, you know. But <laughs> but 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 now, uh, now most of the of the time we also look films, you know, at home, you know. We also look films at home on compute on, on computers, you know. And so, uh, well, uh, and so uh, so. Uh, 
cinephiles you know, also look look films, you know. Of course, they, they prefer to look films uh, in a movie theater and a, and a big screen, but they also look, look, look it at home. But, but, this, but this is the first point. Well, the second point, you know, is that, uh, well, the, the series, in fact, you know, uh, often gives away well, two to form of, of, to forms of exchange, of exchange, you know, between people that are more significant, you know, than in the case of film, you know, because there is this kind of narrative logic of the, of, 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 of the, of the series, you know, with its, uh, uh, continuity and discontinuity at the, uh, at the same time, you know. So, so the series create, creates expectations, the series creates su surprises, you know. And so the series, you know, lends itself, it, itself, you know, to form of, uh, to forms of exchange, of exchange, but, you know, between, between, between people. And also there is this kind of familiarity with the characters, uh, with the characters of, of, of the series, you know. And of course, it, uh, it it reminds us, you know, of an uh, of uh, an old uh, an old literary form, which was the roman feuilleton. You know, so in a way, you know, the, the series works as the roman feuilleton did. You know, in the nineteenth and nineteenth century. So people 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 see people expect people uh, be, be, speak uh, speak. You know, <laughs> be, be between be between them about this expectation, what has happened, what will what will happen, etc. etc. So in fact, it lends itself. You know. Uh, to to forms of public sh sharing, you know, and it it, it does it does it uh, well. I think all the all the more all the uh, all the more so as precisely the series benefits from its temporal structure, you know. It, it, it benefits from its temporal this distension, you know, meaning that both you know uh, both uh, you, you have more time, and second you create intervals, you know, intervals between the between the the, epi the Episodes, you know, so uh, well uh, the series can uh, take uh, can take time, you know. It can create pauses. It can well uh, uh, spends more time, more times with with, with the characters, you know, uh, and uh, sometimes deviates, you know, from the straight line of the plot, you know. So uh, well, so in a way, the series, you know. Uh, can uh, can combine uh, combine you know all representative logic of the plot you know with the well uh, the, the modernist uh, distension of time uh, of, of time you know and of course uh, it was it, it was this connection that was at the same time at the heart of of, of, of cinema you know and I tried to show in the cinematographic in the film in the film film fab, fable you know uh, well how this Kind of tension, you know, between the the straight line of the narrative plot, you know, and well, the meanders, you know, of lived time was at the heart of cinema and was a kind of contradiction that that makes that made it it, it live, you know. Well, but the point is that uh, it seems that uh, film has become uncomfortable, you know, with time in a way, you know. <laughs> that, that there was a time when uh, film could. Uh, couldn't really make this kind of, of connection of two temporalities in a temporal uh, unit of uh, 90, 90 minutes, you know. <laughs> but well, but clearly, clearly, you know, it's it, 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 it no more the case and cinema has become uncomfortable with 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 time. It, it seems now difficult for, for cinema you know, to, to articulate in a, in a standard temporal unit, you know, the the, the line of the straight line of the plot with the the meanders you know, of uh, the meanders of lived time you know and well it it, it, it is of course uh, the advantage you know of the series the series can extend times can benefits from this failure you know and for instance if you think of one one of the most uh, famous you know series uh, the why you know if you think the why could precisely well uh, give a, give a kind of subjective consistency to this uh, to, to, to to these kids you know to these young young dealers you know well, in, in a film, there would have been only, you know, kind of a stereotyped minor characters, and 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 they acquired some some kind of of consistency, you know, in in, in the series. Well, uh, my, my point is not to show that the series is better than the than film, of course, you know. Uh, my point is well, is very simple. I, I think it's not obvious that there is a 
correlation between a visual form, a visual form and a form of spectatorship, you know, the first point. And, uh, and I would say uh, for me, you know, there is really no, no evidence uh, that, no evidence that, you know, the, uh, that the predominance of the series witnesses a significant social, uh, social change or, you know, kind of turning point, you know, in cultural forms at the age of so-called late capitalism. Uh, we will remain like broadly with him with him uh, 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 this topic. You uh, famously complicated uh, the very concept of art uh, by distinguishing between different ways or rather concepts of uh, uh, identifying it. Uh, a particular role within within this framework uh, uh, does play the aesthetic uh, regime of art. Could you tell us what you understand by this, even though we know very well that you've been asked this question an infinite uh, uh, times, but to be a little bit more, uh, more uh, specific, maybe. Uh, the aesthetic regime articulates and presents something, namely the, uh, uh, the beautiful, in such a way that it disregards what the uh, subject is that it uh, uh, represents beauty to, or what is its education, social role, and, and, uh, and so on. It creates a form of, mm, experiential e equality. How does this kind of equality uh, work? What are its uh, consequences? I mean, are there conditions for it to become or rather be effective? Okay, uh, well, f first, you know, uh, first, because it, it is about equality, you know, I must, uh, I must tell that I never gave to art as such, you know, uh, the virtue of radical egalitarianism. No, uh, art in, gener in, in general means a rearrangement of the perceptible, and this rearrangement may be in keeping with a dominant distribution of the sensible, or it may be at odds with that, uh, with that, uh, with that distribution. You know. And so uh, my point about the, the aesthetic regime is that it is a regime of dissensus that breaks with the representative regime, which was a regime of concordance or a re regime of consensus. You know. In the representative regime, beauty is defined as a product of an art of doing. Beauty is a character of something that has been well that has been well done, and and this can be verified, you know, according to first to objective rules of fabrication, and second uh, to the sensory effect uh, the effect of the work, meaning that the pleasure that it gives, but but that it gives to of course a, a specific a specific elite society of connect of connaissance you know so and, and it, it is it is what uh, my message uh, is about or it is what it means my message uh, it means the harmony between artistic production poiesis and uh, and aesthetic reception aesthesis it means precisely this global uh, this global accord accordance you know of course between two forms of hierarchy and my point, you know, um, so my point is that the aesthetic uh, regime is the, the regime, the regime in which this this concordance between two hierarchies uh, is 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 broken. Is broken. It is a regime of dissensus first, because in this regime, beauty is no longer the experience of something that has been well. No, 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 well done. It is no more. It, it is no more. You know the accomplishment of a will. In, instead, it is a most. It is a mode of sensible being, uh, and and not and not the product of an art of, of doing that, that, that you can uh, that you can really estimate with uh, within uh, within you know and uh, a hierarchical grid. So well, of course, uh, of course, uh, in, in a way, everything, everything you know is 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 said. You know, when uh, Kant, you know, uh, tells us tells us that well, uh, that, that beauty is without a concept. Without a concept, meaning uh, meaning this kind of break between beauty between beauty and art. Uh, so beauty beauty is not a product of an artist that gave uh, that gave a form uh, to a, a matter. And this is why. And the aesthetic judgment, you know, is not based on any on any knowledge. I mean, it, it, not a knowledge that appreciates an over an over knowledge. And this is why, in a way, at the same time, it is it, it is a form of judgment that can be universalized, you know, and that can be 
un universalized as an as, uh, as a capacity that belongs to everybody. And this is, of course, uh, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what uh, Schiller uh, uh, explicit, 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 you know, uh, precisely when uh, really he made, uh, he, he made clear that this process of universalization is an egalitarian, egalitarian process, which means that equality, you know, is, well, in the process itself, no, no, not an effect, an effect of the process, you know. So if we just, you know, remember, you know, Schiller's demonstration, you know, well, again, aesthetic experience is a specific experience between an experience of the sensible without any kind of domination. Neither the domination of the understanding over sensibility, uh, or the uh, or, or the domination of form over matter or ends uh, 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 over means. No, and, and, and not not no, no the reverse. You know, so it is a very specific experience of an absence of domination. And for this reason, you know, uh, this form of experience can be thought of as a as a as a human capacity, human capacity that belongs to uh, that belongs to everybody, and no more as a, you know a privilege of a specific category of uh, human beings, you know, that uh, know better or feel better than the others, you know. So I think that is so. So I think that for me this is the main point, you know. Uh, the, the point is not that everyone can appreciate beauty in spite of the difference of knowledge, social background, education, etc. The main point is that beauty itself can be appreciated only out of the dismissal of any hierarchical point of view. So, so uh, well, in other terms, you know, uh, equality is not the effect that beauty produces. E equality, or rather, a certain form of equality, defines uh, defines the very existence of beauty, which which means that, uh, well, in my terms, you know, uh, be uh, be uh, be uh, beauty can be uh, viewed as a specific, uh, definite, uh, you know, a kind a kind of definite mode of verification of equality. A specific, specific means precisely that there is that there is, there is no, you know, uh, specific articulation between this mode of verification of equality and other modes, for instance, uh, for, for instance, you know, the mode of verification of equality in the in the process of political subjectivation, you know. So, well, it is it is a specific verification of equality, and, and, and it, it can it can stand just apart. Just you know, <laughs> but it can also be viewed off as a principle of an other form of community, and of course, uh, this is uh, this is what, what is uh, clearer in in in, in Schiller, you know. Where aesthetic, where aesthetic education, in fact, uh, means a kind of uh, revolution, a kind of a revolution of the uh, of the sensible, you know, that is different, different from. Uh, political equality, but that is different. That is different from the equality uh, embodied in laws, institutions, constitutions, and so on. So well, this is a possible, a possible deduction, you know, uh, deduction of uh, of the egalitarian aspect of of beauty, you know. Uh, so. But and also and also you know you know just it can just produce effects at at random you know and this is what I studied in the the, the night of the proletarians you know the way in which autodidact workers appropriated uh, as a verse of romantic poets you know and turn 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 them to make to to make them the expression of their own experiences and. And in this way, it, it was a, it was a, a means, you know, of of distancing from their own identity. So uh, I would say that well, aesthetic equality may produce effects in in many in many ways and through many paths, you know, direct or indirect, straight or straight or curved or, or even twisted. But uh, my point is that you you cannot really 
uh, unify those aleatory paths, you know, or sometimes dead ends. You can you, can, you cannot unify them, you know, in the concept of of, of conditions, you know. Well, uh, I'm I'm always I'm always in a suspicion, you know, <laughs> you know about about the concept of conditions, you know, because you know, in a way it it, it, it seems just to say, well, well, uh, for things for things, you know, to happen, but as if you have just some conditions to be fulfilled, and of course, and and if they are fulfilled, that's perfect. You know, but the point is that no, 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 in many cases nobody knows really what those conditions are. You know, which means that the, the idea of conditions, in fact, is rather you know a kind of signal of interdiction. You know? I mean, say, say, there, there must be the conditions for the things to happen, but of course we don't know what the conditions are, and uh, things which means things will never will never happen. You know, and so uh, so uh, my point is well uh, the, the effects the effect of aesthetic equality. You know, well. Uh, are always random, you know. There are many paths. Some some paths are, some paths are blocked. Some are easy. Some are hard. But well, there are always encounters, you know, that may happen, even if the conditions are not fulfilled. Thank you so much. I mean, we were, were. I think we're staying within exactly the same same field because we wondered <clears throat> in which way. So what you just called the effects of aesthetic equality. Um, another um, elucidation of them, um, we thought, um, or uh, of the of the connection between equality and why it plays such a crucial role in the aesthetic regime of art, is it seemed to us <clears throat> for the reason that everything can become a part, a sujet uh, for art. That is to say, ordinary experience and artistic sujet become potentially indistinguishable. Um, this regime, the aesthetic regime, if we understand correctly, does suspends classical hierarchy. So only certain topics, only certain sujets can become artistic. But, but we were wondering, is this equally true for all forms of art that belong to the aesthetic regime and the way in which, in which a subject a pre, a, like a, a approaches them or experience them? To rephrase this, does the fact that anything can appear within a film, even the most trivial, maybe even meaningless things, and that anything can appear within a poem, also suspend or, um, the specific form in which we approach each particular form of art or create a quality uh, of art forms. Film, for example, seems to be easier to approach to a lay person um, than contemporary poetry or contemporary sculpture. But this might just be a wrong way of putting it. So how does the equality at play here link to the specificity of the forms of art and their reception? Okay. Uh, first, uh, I, uh, I will say I uh, totally agree with the idea that the fact that or an, any ordinary person or, or, or any trivial thing, you know, may appear in an artwork doesn't imply that anybody will go and see this artwork and love it. Okay. Perfect. Now, uh, uh, now the, 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 of course, it is always the, the, the question, you know, how, how we think of the, well, the ways of access, you know, the ways of access, you know, uh, of any of anybody, you know, to to any to, to any kind to any kind of art, you know. Well, and I think that well, there can there there is a multitude of factors, you know, that may facilitate or block our approach to this or that form of art. And the first point is that the very name of art can work as a barrier, and very often works as, as a barrier. <laughs> Well, you, you, so you, you, you emphasize, you know, the, the case of uh, the case of film, you know, well, which I think is is interesting, is interest, is interesting, uh, and I, why why is it easier to approach, you know, to approach art in film? You know? I think for me, uh, there is or rather there was <laughs> there were there were there were two 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 reasons two reasons because we are no more in the same time, you know, mm -hmm. um, but well. Uh, it, it was it was easier to approach film uh, for for two for two reasons. First, because when when I was young, there were uh, movie theaters everywhere. So movie theaters, you know, were part of our en environment. You know, we live we live we, you know you know between between movie theaters, which which of course is no more the case. You know, 
And second, the second point, you know, is that you were not obliged, you know, when you when you saw a film to think that you about, when when you went to, to went to went to movie theater, you were not obliged to think that you were going to see art. And, and this is very important, you know, because it was possible to see films and to enjoy films, you know, by 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 Renoir, by Renoir or, or Chaplin or John or John Ford. I, 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 I don't know, without having to consider them art art artworks. And it was so. And so there was at the same time a very large visibility of of art, but uh, you know at the same time it was a vis the visibility of a, a kind of familiar form of entertainment. So uh, so you you saw for instance you you saw for instance you know. Uh, 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 Chaplin's Modern Times, you know, or you saw John Ford's The Searchers, you know, you <laughs> both are beautiful films, you know, <laughs> and, and more beautiful than, 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 than many paintings or sculptures, etc., etc. But at the same time, we are not obliged, you know, to think, oh, I'm in front of art. And I, I must, uh, I must uh, adopt the attitude of somebody who is in front of art. No, 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 no. You are not obliged. Uh, on the contrary, you know, when uh, when you go to you to, to well, just to to to, to see a, an artistic exhibition, you know, even if the works are very very bad, you are obliged to think oh, it's art. You know, and I I must react in front of art. Okay. Um, at the same time, as I said, it's it's more it's more you know the, the past you know uh, because now of course uh, all those movie theaters are, uh, that, that we are part of an environment have, 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 dis have disappeared. You have disappeared, you know, and and you know uh, now you have those multiplexes with of which of at the same time this formatting you know this form this, this formatting that gives you know that, well to every social group or to every to to every group you know the, the kind of the kind of thing that is supposed to best uh, uh, to, to best fit, you know, is uh, is or her, you know, uh, culture, desires, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think that uh, really the, the issue of formatting is much more important, you know, than the issue of distinction. You know, so the point is not whether. It, it is distinguished. It is distinguished or not. No, the point is, is really you are given the you are given the kind of film you know that is supposed to be for you, and what well, which is of course the definition of policy. Okay, this is the first point. The second point, you know, is that the aesthetic judgment is a judgment about beauty and not a judgment about art. And the judgment of, of about art, uh, and still more, of course, the practice of art require various forms of knowledge, and the acquisition of those forms of knowledge may depend on a lot of mediations. You know, let, let, let us just uh, to, to, to a personal uh, take a personal case. You know, so um, one of my son is a musician. Uh, why did he become a, a musician? <laughs> because, uh, because you know, he, he, he was initiated, you know, by the by the sons of the of, of the migrant Spanish car, caretaker, you know, who took care took care of him, you know, when he when he was a baby. So it's not, of course, there are mediations, you know, but those mediations are not exactly, you know, the conditions of social distinction, et cetera, et cetera, nor is it about the opposition between high art and low art, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So of course, you, of course, you, uh, you, uh, you so the question is, uh, well, well, uh, well, as well, this kind of true always always uh, this separation between uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge and uh, the knowledge of art and the appreciation of beauty. You know, uh, well, if contemporary poetry, you know, uh, uh, means uh, uh, hermetic poetry, of course, you can say, oh, not everybody can has, uh, can have access to contemporary poetry, but there are a lot of of persons, you know, <laughs> that, that do poetry, you know, without caring whether it is or not contemporary po po poetry. Okay. Well, uh, some conceptual works, uh, of course, may require initi initiation. Of course, uh, you, you cannot you 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 can really you know be moved by you know, let us say an installation by Joseph Kosut, you know, without without a certain idea of conceptual art. Okay, but there are also many conceptual installations that can be appreciated by lay people 
even if they are, uh, if and they are, they are uh, unable to say what conceptual art is. Well, uh, for, for instance, there is now an exhibition in Paris, which is called uh, uh, Avant l'Orage, Before the Storm. And it's a big exhibition, big exhibition, you know, of course, uh, <clears throat> dealing with all the contemporary issues, uh, cli climate change, the future of the planet, the relation between the human and the human, etc. And there are uh, very, very huge, uh, very, very huge installations, insta installations, you know, and many people uh, of all ages and origins and, and many families, you know, with a lot of, of, of with a lot of kids, you know, circulate, circulating among, among those huge uh, install, installations. And for instance, we have a, a kind of big, a, a big trees, you know, that occupy the whole rotunda, you know, and, and uh, well, uh, and uh, these trees uh, and this tree, you know, uh, symbolizes and, and at, at the same time, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the question of the acid rains in French forests, you know, uh, and also it is, it, it, is connect, it is connected with imp American imperialism in Vietnam. So, so of course, uh, you, you, you can say you need many things, many, many, many informa much, much information, you know, uh, to really, uh, uh, you know, encompass, you know, all the elements, but you are not obliged you know, to, in fact, you know, to encompass them, you know. And, and so there, there are many people, you know, that, who are not our connoisseurs, but who, who circulate, you know, among those installations and the other branches of the tree. And well, they, they negotiate freely, I would say, their relations, the relationship between their own commitment to uh, the issues of climate change and, and so on, and the various forms uh, deployed, you know, in the space or projected on the on the screen. So, so again, there are many forms of approach, a multiplicity of artistic practices and artistic experience and aesthetic experiences. And okay, but uh, I think what, what we should avoid, you know, is reducing, reducing this multiplicity, uh, you know, uh, by, you know, thing, uh, by making a kind of well, opposition between, uh, real, between principle and reality, uh, saying, okay, of course, it's equality, but how can people access to equality, et cetera, and, and they are not equal to access equality, okay, uh, okay, so I think, uh, well, <laughs> you know, Again, uh, uh, again, let us uh, let us uh, let us think of the multiplicity of of ways, you know, you know, rather than uh, than, the, than thinking of all the all, all that, um, that all the things that that uh, uh, prevent people, you know, to access. Uh, your most recent book in English is The Time of the Landscape on the Origins of the uh, Aesthetic Revolution. Can you tell us a little bit more about, uh, about this book? What are the uh, origins of the aesthetic uh, revolution and what is, uh, what is uh, uh, the latter? How it is related to the time of the landscape? The time of the landscape, first from an empirical point of view, you know, in a uh, historical sequence, you know, in the, in the 18th century, when the landscape uh, as such became the object of a specific experience, you know, not only an object of delight, but an object of thought, you know. So in the in the eighteenth century, there are new 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 new, gar, new gardens, you know, new conceptions of the gardens. There are many polemics about gardens and landscaping, and also there is the beginning, you know, of uh, you know journeys through wild nature, you know, for the mountains, etc., etc. Et et okay, so uh, so for all these uh, all these new things, you know, these new new gardens, new polemics, new, new discussions, new polemics, new travels, you know, well, landscape, landscape you know, acquired a really specificity, uh, not only as a pleasant or sometimes, sometimes a terrible, terrible, you know, um, a spectacle, but as a model of coexistence of a multitude of elements uh, elements in a whole. So, so a landscape, a landscape this, this means, you know, the way in which, uh, well, uh, grass, uh, trees, rocks, waters, uh, leaves, etc., etc., coexist, uh, coexist as a whole, you know. So, 
so 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 uh, and 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 of course uh, and of course uh, uh, this is not only a model a model you know just for art it is a model also for the political community political community so so uh, so uh, so uh, you know uh, there are in the 18th century so many, many so many, many discussions, many polemics about gardens and landscaping. And what is interesting is that you know there is always uh, there is always a connection that that that, that is that is made uh, bet between you know the competing forms of gardens and or landscaped and the forms of political of political organization of the society. So there are always there are always the idea that the, 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 the way the, the way you know uh, elements uh, elements coexist coexist in a landscape is a model is a model or is a or is a copy you know of the of 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 the way in which people are gathered in in political communities you know and also uh, uh, the, the most uh, the most uh, famous. Um, Aspect of uh, of this discussion, you know, is is given by the well, let us say the English polemics against French absolutism. So there is, a, you know, through uh, through uh, Shakespeare, Addison, Burke, and, and and many and many other philosophers, but also, you know, through many architects, landscape architects, you know, this uh, this big polemics, you know, uh, saying the French garden is a is a garden is a Cartesian garden, you know, it's it just made of geometrical straight uh, straight straight lines, you know, and it is of course. The, the the reflection of French absolutism, you know. So uh, at the beginning of the eighteen of the eighteenth century, you know, so the French uh, the French uh, garden is supposed to is supposed to be kind of mirror of the French absolutism, you know. But um, at the end of the century, you know, the, the same comparison is applied to French Revolution, uh, with the idea French revolutionary uh, revolutionaries they they level they, they level every they level everything, you know. They want they they want they want everything you know to be really organized uh, organized according to geometry to straight lines to leveling everything etc okay so there is so there is there is this this polemics you know and uh, of course against uh, against the french absolutism there is the ideal of the of both the english garden and the english monarch the English, the English garden is made of of curb lines, of curb lines, of sinuous sinuous paths, you know, of uh, of mellow hills, uh, hills and vales, uh, uh, and of uh, grad uh, gradations of of light and shadow, etc. And in the same way, of course, English monarchy and English society is well is, is a good is a good monarchy and a good society because it is made of slight differences, yes, and imperceptible uh, differences. You know, just soft soft lines, soft gradations of light and sh and shadow that connect. In fact, you know the the humblest uh, the humblest uh, English English people. You know, uh, where, you know where, where, where with the Aristocrats who are the aristocrats who are the you know the big uh, the, the big trees the big uh, the big hooks you know protecting you know protecting the population you know under the shadow. Okay, so there, there is there, there is this kind of stereotype you know opposition that runs all, all, all over the 18th century. But what is interesting is that at the end of the same century, and even in England, uh, there, there you know there is a rise of a wave of criticism against the English Garden itself. You know, saying the English Garden is is, is not is, is no is no no more natural than the French Garden. The curb line is no more natural. You you know, than the, 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 the straight, the straight line, you know. Uh. No, no, and so it, it, it is not a not a matter of opposing a, a line to another line, you know, uh, because because in, in in nature there are no lines. In nature there are no lines. In nature, you know, everything is intricate, intricacies. What is the, what is the big word, the big word, you know, at that, that moment, intricacy. What makes the beauty of nature is that everything is 
intri is intricated, you know, but every that all elements are, you know, freely growing and interlacing with it, with each other. So that the unity of the natural landscape, you know, is not made of the subordinations of the elements to the idea of the whole, but it made precisely of this kind of interlacing and mutual sympathy of all of, of, of elements, you know. So there is that, 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 that polemics, you know, that that is um, handled by some uh, some English some English landowners, which who are also you know uh, art connoisseurs, you know, <laughs> against against English uh, the English garden, you know, with with that and with so the idea, let us say of. Well, of, of a democ democratic democratic gardens, you know, where all elements are equal. They are not revolutionaries at all, but they think that precisely, you know, it is it, it, it is necessary, you know, to think of a kind of garden and a kind of society, you know, that uh, that pre precisely, you know, doesn't lead uh, lead, you know, to the horrors of French Revolution. Okay, so so this is uh, the first uh, the first uh, the first element, you know, uh, you know this. The garden as a political a political model, you know. The second aspect, you know, is uh, you know concerns uh, no more polit not not more precisely art. Why? Uh, because uh, wh what uh, what the landscape shows, what the landscape shows, well, is something totally new. Uh, because the landscape is not only a, net, a, a natural spectacle, the, the landscape shows uh, shows uh, nature as an artist. This is, this is the main point, you know, because you know, uh, because preced pre precedently, you know, well, of course, uh, the idea is that art must imitate na must imitate nature, you know. But now, now it, it 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 is no more the point, you know. The point is not that uh, art must uh, must imitate nature, but that nature is an artist itself. But is an artist itself. Uh, but, but at the same time, is its own. Uh, uh, you know, it is a very specific kind of artist because it is an anti or she is because she she is always she is always feminine at the time you know uh, nature is uh, is an artist and an anti artist at the same time because precisely nature is the opposite of art nature uh, nature doesn't want anything nature doesn't want to impose a form a form over a matter matter you know nature is just a kind of self deploy deploy deployment you know and so uh, and, 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 and so uh, really, uh, you know, uh, this is why uh, the landscape is, the time of landscape and the landscape, you know, are so important, you know, in the constitution of what I call the aesthetic revolution, meaning the shift from the representative regime to the, to the aesthetic regime, uh, because, well, uh, uh, as I <laughs> and as you discussed, uh, we discussed it, you know, just earlier, you know, uh, one, one of, of the, uh, the main aspects of this revolution is the transformation of the very status of, of beauty, you know, the idea about beauty is not the character of something that has been well done. That is the accomplishment of the will, but beauty is a free beauty is a free, is a free form, you know. So and it is uh, something uh, that uh, uh, that even if it has been done, doesn't doesn't you know as the appearance of being of being done, you know. So beauty is well is the becomes uh, the experience of a specific mode of the sensible that does not depend of knowledge, but is not the expression of a will. It becomes the equivalence of what has been done and what has not been done. The equivalence of a conscious process and an unconscious process. And so, of course, the, the, this is why uh, the landscape is so important in the aesthetic revolution and the shift from the representative to the aesthetic regime. Because the landscape, you know, is in fact the first example. The first example of something that will be become very important in the aesthetic regime, you know, the the identity of art and non-art. So the, 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 the work of an artist who is not an artist, and of course uh, later, uh, later this 
idea of the identity of art and non-art will take on, you know, well, different over forms, you know. So the, the beauty, the beauty, you know, of the of, of the anything, you know, or mechanical art already already made, and and so on. So, but I would say this is, and at a certain point, I would say that the, um, this kind of. Uh, agency of uh, nature itself will be transfer, tra transferred for instance so, to the agency of technique of technique itself you know in the times of of, so, of, of photo photo cinema etc etc but uh, well, well but there is this kind of initial po initial point you know uh, of the invention of an artist uh, an artist who is not an artist and so I, there is there are both there are these two aspects you know the political and the aesthetic and the aesthetic you know aspect and of course if we join if we join the two aspects you know we can see in the landscape the, the model of a community of a, of a new kind of community and well it's always the same thing an aesthetic community that that may be you know in, in a way more more essential more essential than the political community uh, to connect to this, uh, but move to the contemporary situation, ecological catastrophes, climate change and other natural disasters seem to be at the forefront of many people's concerns. Do you think that today politics must be environmental? What does this do to the idea of equality that is crucial for you? We are thinking of contemporary discussions uh, under the heading of climate justice, bringing together the human, the non-human and things like that. OK, well, I think that uh, the question can be interpreted in two ways, uh, well, but each, each of these two ways raises a problem. You know? uh, in the first way, uh, you, can, uh, you can think of ecology as an object of an object, you know, for politics. You know? Well, the problem is that, in a way, politics has no objects of its own. <laughs> it, was, it was my point, you know, the objects of politics are the same, in a way, as objects of of police, you know, with of course the difference that from the point of view of of of, uh, of police, you know, objects, you know, of, uh, objects belong to the world of objectivity, you know, uh, and so so uh, you know they, they define problems. Well, those problems are always objective, uh, uh, objective, you know, and and you cannot change, you cannot change any, any anything. You know? but, but, but from the point of the point of view of politics, of course, was well, there is uh, there is something more uh, meaning a process of subjectivation, you know. So, well, and, and of course, this is what, what we can uh, we, we can check, you know, in in any circumstance. For instance, if we think of the <clears throat> recent uh, movement of protests, you know, against the uh, against uh, the reform of the, the reform of the uh, of the pensions in, you know, in France, you know, uh, from the point of view of, from the point of view of police, you know, the question of pension, well, it's just a problem of financial balance, financial balance, financial balance, you know, uh, which is linked to the the rise and the falls of natality and mortality, which are all entirely objective, objective issues. You know, uh, well, uh, the difference, you know, the difference that makes politics exist, you know, it, it happens when you think that it is not only a problem of of balance, but that, but that it is a balance. It is a problem. Or it is a conflict about the very kind of community that links us. Okay. Uh, so, ju just uh, just uh, to uh, to give uh, the background uh, the background of the question. Uh, so, uh, what what wh wh what is uh, the main problem with ecological issues with climate change? You know, that that they is that they bring you know very solid arguments to well the consensual idea idea of. Ob objective problems, prob we, 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 well, because well, we are all similarly threatened by climate change. You know, whether we are rich or poor, conservative or liberal, socialist or communist, etc. You know, we are all concerned. So, all all on the same ship. Okay, uh, and second, it can it can easily be proved that we are all responsible for all the damages damages caused to the planet. You know, whether we are whether you know we are rich countries or poor or poor countries. You know, we 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 contribute to those damages. So it so it may seems that matters of 
equality or inequality, domination, exploitation between the human beings become entirely secondary, you know, because it is a question of survival for, uh, you know, for all, but also because, because what uh, there is a kind of displacement of the idea of the wrong, you know, what comes to the fore is the wrong done by the human as such to the non-human. And well, hence the idea that a kind of radical uh, change must, must, be, must be brought to politics, that politics cannot be fought you know, in, the, in, the, or in the old way in terms of class, uh, class conflicts, uh, right, uh, right and left, et cetera, et cetera. You know. Well, the, 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 which of course is, is the idea that has been, uh, that has been sustained you know, by, by Many eminent uh, thinkers like Bruno Latour, you know. Okay. Uh, well, the, and the, the point is that, the, well, the, the, well, in, in, in a way, you know, there is, a, there is, a, 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 this idea of a radical change, a change of politics uh, can come uh, close, in fact, uh, to, 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 to police, to, 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 the, to the law of police, you know, uh, because, uh, uh, because if it, for instance, you know, I, I'm thinking, I, I'm thinking, you know, uh, well, a point made by Bruno Latour, you know, that politics now, well, is about objects. Politics is about object. Politics, uh, politics, you know, must be. Uh, must be object oriented, you know, meaning precisely that it is no more a matter, you know, of, of conflicts between groups, but it is an object of common concern, you know. And in a way, in a way, by the kind of proximity, of course, it is just a proximity because uh, because uh, Bruno Latour and his followers uh, never say that oh, it's an objective problem. Let us uh, let us leave it, you know, to governments, to 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 the World Bank, etc. No, no, of course not, of course not. But uh, but uh, there is a there is a real problem uh, pr precisely for making the distinction you know between politics and police in this case but of course uh, there is an other way of uh, of tackling the, the the issue you know because well ecological issues uh, are are also directly involved in conflicts between human groups you know so there are you know, there is there are the interests of the agri food companies in Brazil, and of course there are the, in France the forms of life of the uh, Amazonian tribes, you know, or there are the the, the, are the interests of of air traffic uh, com companies, you know, against the form of life or rural environment, you know, in 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 in, in west in western France, etc. And in the, in, the, in the case of Notre Dame des Landes, of course. So in such case, in such cases, you know, the ecological conflict is immediately carried out as a political conflict, so that it may appear as the ultimate form of anti-capitalist fight. You know, it's not only a matter of a conflict between uh, between capitalists and workers. You know, it's really a matter of of salvaging the, the planet against the destructive form of force of capitalism, you know. Okay, in this in, in this case, in, in this case, so we, we, we think of we think of it well well in terms of subjects and no more in terms of, of, of objects. Okay. But the problem is how we exactly you know think of this shift, you know. Because I would say there is a there is a, a dilemma. Either those conflicts are considered new forms of an old conflicts, old conflict, or they are conceptualized within a new stage setting, meaning an extension of the egalitarian logic, and which is what is what is at stake, you know, in many in many discourses about about climate change, ecology, the planet, etc. Today, you know, the idea that there is a necessary extension of the egalitarian stage. Uh, through, uh, <clears throat> through the inclusion of new, act, new actors in politics, and namely the non-human. And of course, this means the transgression of the Aristotelian principle, you know, principle that politics is precisely, uh, politics begins when, when you put uh, the animals and the, go, uh, and the gods, you know, you know simultaneously out, you know, offside. Of, of, of okay. So, um, but, but there is, a, there is, a, so now I would say that the, if you want to think, if you could want to think of the ecological uh, ecological struggle as a form of egalitarian struggle, struggle, 
you you have to include uh, to to include a new a new agents. You know, I just uh, just like to 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 make a very short quote by you know from Bruno Latour. Uh, saying you cannot make alliance between political agents and objects that are external to society and deprived of the power to act. Yeah. The outcome of the dispute can only be modified if all rebels in overlapping configuration are entrusted with the task of fighting. Okay, this is an extension of equality, but the point is how we exactly conceive of this rebellion this rebellion of the non-human, or how we, are, we, are, we exactly conceive of this participation of the non-human, you know, in the fight. And well, and I think that uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the thinkers, you know, who, who deal with those, uh, with those issues, you know, well, in fact, have various answers, you know, because sometimes, you know, this alliance between the human and the non-human, in fact, is only a matter of interaction. Of inter so the idea of Gaia has precisely a, a place of interaction. But interaction uh, clearly doesn't define a political agency. Well, sometimes also it's a matter of representation with the idea of the parliaments of things, with the idea that things must be represented just as well as human beings are represented. Of course, you can say, but if, if, if they are represented as well as, uh, it's, it's not, it's not uh, really very exciting. And, and so, uh, and some, sometimes, you know, it is thought of as really a real alliance between co-participants in the same fight. But well, uh, at this point, uh, really, we, we come upon, which is uh, really the, the main problem, you know, uh, a savoir, uh, meaning, uh, well, the, if, if we think of political agency as a verification of equality, this verification of equality, you know, so far has always happened through a process of subjectivation, you know. So, and uh, so if we, if we go back, you know, to the scene of the, on, on the Aventine, you know, so human beings that, that, that are treated like animals make the, make the demonstration that, that, they are, that they are human beings, you know. But the point is, what kind of, what kind of demonstration, you know, can be made by the non, by the non human, you know. Uh, I think that at, at this point, you know, it may change, I don't know, there is no procedure, procedure of verification of equality, allowing the non-human to verify their equality with human beings and allowing the human beings to, ver to verify their equality with the non-human. And the point is that unfortunately, so far it is always human groups, you know, that endorse the rights of the, the, the rights of the non-humans and the agency of the non-human. We can easily connect the, the 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 very. I think it's the last question for for the discussion to the to the topic that you were you were just said, uh, that we were, were just discussing. Uh, some argue that the main field of class struggle today is uh, ecology. Do would you agree with this uh, claim that the primary field of political action, uh, and, uh, and 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 struggle is in in in, in ecology? Or uh, what could a different organization? Uh, uh, of the sensible look like when applied to uh, to ecology. Well, okay, in a sense, it's just a follow up of the former of the previous question. You know, well, so we are we so we are we are told you know by the thing by 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 you know thinkers of climate change uh, Gaia. And all of those issues, you know, we are we, we are told that well, well, it it is very there is no contradiction between all social struggles, you know, and ecological str struggles, you know, as Bruno Latour tells us uh, somewhere, we have not to choose, you know, between uh, struggling for salaries and struggling for the birds. Okay, it, however, it is an extension of the struggle. It is a shift from the social to the geosocial question. Okay. For me, the main problem is not about the, the content of the struggle, but it's about its form, its very form. Because for a class struggle to exist, well, the first thing is that uh, there must be 
agents that play the role of class warriors. And of course, class warriors are not, as political subjects, are not the same as classes, as social groups, okay. But uh, their, their existence, uh, the existence of class of class as a political agent or class warriors as uh, manifesting a political agency goes through a process of subjectivation. It, it goes through the manifestation of a wrong. And the point is the way in which the ecological wrong is formulated. But that makes it difficult to conceive of such a subjectivation. You know. And well, in, in, in a way, it's always, it's always the same dilemma, you know. Either, either the damage is subjectivized, subjectivized as a wrong done by a category of human beings that to another category of human beings that has the capability for handling the wrong. But okay, but the, we know that the problem today is well, how can we exactly define the, define it in terms of class? You know? well, the subject proletarian, of course, was not the same as the as the working as the working class. Okay, it, it went through a process of disidentification, you know. But in a way, for a process of disidentification to happen, you know, there must be a kind of an identity, a consistency of you know of the of, of, of the group to to, to undo it. and. And, and it, it is clear that when people uh, speak of a new ecological class, you know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not an agent, you know, coming from a process of disidentification. Rather, it's kind of a, a kind of gathering, you know, a gathering uh, of people who have who have an interest, you know, in the issue for this or that reason, which is not the same. Okay, so this is the first problem. Or of course, you you, you can uh, you can uh, state that class struggle itself belongs to all politics. You know, that it, that it is uh, no that it is no more really attuned to the to the edge of the Anthropocene. And so, in this case, it, uh, well, you have to think in terms of interaction between various agents and various agency. Well, but well, the question is is always the same. But these agents are are no longer political subjects, you know. And so, uh, and, and it is always the same thing, either, either those, uh, those, those agents are data of a problem or they are, they are interacting forces, you know. But, but you, you can really, you, you, you can never really come to, uh, come to the point, you know, where you can define, you know, you know, uh, you know a kind of class, a form of class subjectivation, you know. So I think that the, 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 the problem the problem is that, is that at the end of the day, you know, you, you have to move from the terrain of social and political uh, revolution to the terrain of uh, an epistemic and ultimately ontological revolution, you know. And uh, for instance, uh, the reversal of the Galilean or Cartesian revol revolution, you know, the shift from the infinite mathematical universe of Galilee and Descartes, you know, to a landing on Earth, you know, to, to, take, to take on, you know, the famous formulation by Bruno Latour. You know. Well, and, and I think, uh, well, it, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not only, you know, a, a matter of a specific, uh, of some specific theoreticians, you know, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's an issue of, of, an issue of, of the day, you know, uh, there is this, this there is this new specter and uh, spect uh, this new this new specter specter you know I would say in the, in left uh, in left uh, left thinking uh, uh, which is uh, I would say the specter of the ontological revolution the uh, the idea that well <coughs> you 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 have you have to move you have to move you know from the the terror from, from the Marxist terrain terrain you know off. <coughs> Of class, of class, of class struggle of the Marxist, the Marxist, the Marxist history of capitalist accumulation. You know, you have to move. To, you have to move from this terrain to another, to, to another uh, terrain. You know, and, and 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 think from the point of view of some kind of 
uh, original uh, original uh, scene, you know, the original scene, which is always more more or less, you know, conceived of in Heideggerian terms, you know, meaning that there is a kind of original metaphysical, you know, uh, scene of Western uh, Western thought, you know, that must that must be that must be with us, you know, and of and this is uh, this is not specific, you know, to uh, to thinkers of the climate change, you know, but, because in a way, from my point of view, you know, uh, many Marxists have become Heideggerian. <laughs> meaning uh, that the revolution they are heading, they are, uh, they are heading uh, uh, to, uh, well, it is uh, it's no more social and political revolution, but an, an, onto an ontological revolution, you know, and, you know, so, uh, rever reversing, you know, the, uh, uh, with a metaphys the metaphysical, you know, orientation, orientation of, uh, of Western, of Western, of Western food. So, well, uh, I think for, 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 for me, you know, uh, well, uh, it's, it's uh, as I said. It's it, it's not on. It's not only a, a point a specific uh, specific to the to to uh, to the thinkers of climate change, anthropology, uh, <clears throat> anthropocene, and Gaia. It's it, it's something something more, more, more general. Called the idea that we. That we uh, as that we will we'll never reach. Let let us say the. The promise, the promise of Marxism. We, we, have, we have to go back to have to go backwards, you know, and go, go, go and find what is the original thing. Thank you very much for this. Um, we always end our our episodes with a series of either or questions, and you can elaborate on your choice. You can refuse the choice, but you um, you don't absolutely not have to elaborate on your choice. Um, so either or, uh, the first one, Foucault or Althusser. I would say uh, Foucault because uh, Foucault uh, because because Foucault taught me that uh, there is thought everywhere, you know. While while Althusser only, uh, you know. No, of course I exaggerate, but I, I I would say because I have to be brief, you know. <laughs> but in a way, you know, uh, Altus, uh, Althusser, you know, taught us that there were there was ideology everywhere, you know? and Foucault, but there but there is thought everywhere, which is more which is more interesting. <laughs> okay, the second one, Schiller or Hegel? Well, uh, both, both of them, I would say, <laughs> uh, because uh, of course Hegel is a much deeper thinker than than Schiller. There is no point, there is no problem <laughs> about this, you know. But uh, well, Schiller op opens something that Hegel closes or tries to close to to close. And of course, uh, I, I could say oh, okay. so. So it is Schiller, but no, I think that uh, we need both the thinking of the opening and the uh, and the and the thinking of the of the closure. But both are important, you know, for understanding our world. The third one, Giga Bertov or Jean Luc Godard. I would say Godard, uh, just because uh, Bertov knows what it means to be a dialectician. Godard doesn't know exactly no, so he tries, so it's uh, he searches, which is more interesting. The fourth one, Stefan Mallarmé or Arthur Rimbaud? Uh, ultimately Rimbaud. Because um, both Mallarmé and Rimbaud were great interpreters of their times. But what, is, what I think what is uh, specific in Rimbaud is that in Rimbaud you can hear the voice of the time itself, you know. Uh, so I would say that, uh, that Rimbaud is, poly is polyphonic, you know, and that in Rimbaud you, you hear much more than Rimbaud, you know. Uh, while, you know, in Mallarmé's Mal 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 poetry is only, is only, uh, is only Mallarmé's poetry, only his, his poetry. <laughs> okay, the fifth one, Beethoven or Wagner? For me, it makes no, it not, doesn't make much sense. I I would say uh, Beethoven, not, not not to say that he is a, a better musician than, than, than Wagner, but because I think that Wagner would not have been able to write music without hearing it while while Beethoven was able. Next to the last one, Mother Nature or Mother Courage. I would, uh, well, I would say, uh, I would say, mother courage, uh, just, but I, because I don't know exactly, you know, what nature is or what kind of, mo of what kind of mother it is, but uh, at the same time, you know, uh, for me, you know, this mother courage, courage is ne never, never breach character, nor breach idea about her, about uh, the character. <laughs> and one final one: tragedy or comedy? Comedy, because. Uh, I don't, I don't like the catastrophists. 
Thank you so much, Jacques-Ancia. This was a truly enjoyable and a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, with us to do this. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. <laughs>